Welcome to the J Train Podcast. This is J Train Jared Freed coming to you live from the quarantine cab in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. We are here Mondays and Thursdays with your emails, your stories, your questions. I say it every episode. Let me say it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Yeah, that's right. The, your, your, your favorite TV show ain't thanking you every week. I am. Thank you. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. From the bottom of my feathered nuts, I want to thank you all for listening. And you got to keep doing it. If you're new here, pay up. Pay the piper. Pay the J train. Tell a friend, a coworker, a brother, a sister, a mama, papa. Make it your Instagram story. I'll share it out, baby. We got great guests. We got great emails. It's all coming together. And listen, YouTube land. Hi, YouTube. We're on YouTube. Get subscribed to my channel. I'm doing tons of great stuff. The Rose Rehash every night after The Bachelor. The Bachelorette this season. The Bachelor next season. We're doing it. That show is a it's a hit, baby. So go on YouTube. Subscribe. You can watch full episodes of the J Train podcast. They're all there. Also, Patreon. I'm going to keep mentioning it because we're doing great stuff. Three extra podcasts a week. They're short. They're mini-sodes. So you get a little taste, a little... A little taste of J Tray. Three times a week, five bucks a month. That's a deal for the price of a cup of coffee. So come on out. Patreon.com slash Jared Freed. Patreon.com slash Jared Freed. And I'm doing live shows. St. Louis Mo. St. Louis, Missouri, Indianapolis, Indiana. That's so weird. It's Indianapolis, Indiana. That's is that how you say it? Am I an idiot? I'm looking at my guess. No, Jess? you're right. I'm right, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Indianapolis, Indiana. That's how you say it? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. It sounds weird. They were like, yeah, we'll just do Indiana. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'll be there. So, <laughs> Jared, jaredfree.com, jaredfree.com, jaredfree.com. Very excited about today's guest. Um, new to the podcast, hilarious comic. He is the host of a very popular podcast called The Dollop. Gareth Reynolds, thank you for coming on. Hey, everybody. Hi, Jared. Indianapolis. How are you? I'm good, buddy. How are you doing? I'm good. It's been a while. I, you know, we interact every now and again over Twitter, but you're in L.A. Yep. And um, how are you? What's going And we met. I should let people know. You created a show that was on MTV. Yes. Called Philosophy. Yes. And I was a uh, like a... A uh, a person on the panel would You're make fun of internet guest. stuff. A panel yes. guest. Nobody had ever done a show about making fun of the internet with comics before, so we thought we'd crack that night. L- let's uh, figure it out. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, you were a guest. And you also you had uh, a great idea, remember, that we were trying to pull off where you would bring Facebook profiles to life. So I was like, Yeah, it's so interesting because right now I'm kind of having like a flashback moment. I made this I made this YouTube video and like it's crazy that like YouTube has just been like kind of in the background of social media, you know, like kind of just living there and happening. And I was like, maybe I'll make these YouTube this YouTube video, whereas if Facebook invites could talk and I did it with my buddy Pat and the whole idea being that people used to send these Facebook invites to every event. Isn't it crazy that that feels like it's 100 years ago? Imagine doing that. Imagine making a Facebook invite now. How useless you would feel. Yeah, it used Use, to be a way it to used to be. It, it used to be useful. Yes, Like, totally. hey, I'm doing a show. Let me know if you're going to come so I know what numbers to, like, get ready for. Or you'd and, get an invite and you'd be like, I have been invited to something. Yeah. What and is this like, event? <laughs> Whereas now and, you're like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, like, who's in – yeah, whose birthday? And you used to get these, like, again, every, like, from 22 to, like, 27-year-old, you know, uh, mostly women but men too – you get these invites that were like, I'm doing birthday dinner or drinks at this bar on this night. And you would actually contemplate going. Oh, yeah. Oh, it would feel like a legitimate invite. It, now yes. it's like spam level. It's just spam. Totally. Now it's totally spam. But there was You're a just... time when it felt <laughs> important. And you were now you get invited to like, you know, it'll be like Jared Freed invites you to like Jared Freed comedian. And it's like, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. That's <laughs> just. 
<laughs> That's so true. And by, it always is like, do you want to invite people to like your page? You're like, I'm not at this level yet. I'm not. This no. Level. If I you have to invite someone to like your page, you don't need a page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. But yeah, you'd made these things that were bringing the Facebook, f bringing Facebook to life, like having someone actually be the person who sent the invite, because say the, the thoughts from the real invite. Mm -hmm. You would we because people would have these invite descriptions that we're talking about right now that people you would read them, yeah. and some of them it, again everything moves from serious to then being made fun of, but then some people in their descriptions would be like. We're going to fucking pop up. They'd be super aggressive, these yeah. invites. Yeah. Especially, like, like, that was the whole. It's going to be fucking wild. You'd be like, yeah. all right, this is a good invite. Yeah. He's got and, a pretty solid invite going. This guy really wants to get down this weekend. He Holy knows how shit. to invite people. Yeah, and, and I remember reading those, and, like, there was always a male version that was super aggressive, like, with, like, you better be ready to get fucked up. And the female one was always, like, this is like for real, you know, like, <laughs> like if you're not like going to hang, you don't better, bother. don't even come. come. Yeah. Don't even was, read any further. <laughs> all Stop these Facebook, reading. <laughs> and all these Facebook invites were just like, uh, they, male or female, they were all aggressively challenging you to drink to blackout. <laughs> Right? Yeah, yes, yeah. So yes. I, I, so the idea of my buddy Pat and I, I was reading, what happened was I'm reading an invite from a woman who I knew, and I'm reading it on, like, the phone to my buddy Pat, and we're editing other videos that we're doing, and I'm doing it in that, you know, that voice, that, like, you know, basic bitch voice where it's like, and you better be ready to go out. And he's like dying. His wife is like dying laughing. And he was like, we should do a video. He goes, I could put you in the Facebook invite of you acting out the invite. This video is still out there somewhere. And then I was like, we, and then he was like, we need a male one. So I like had met Krista Stefano at open mics and I was like, hey, DeStefano, do you want to come, like, perform in this? And he was like, I'm down. He came over, and we both did it. And then, like, the video, like, did, you know, got views. And then I get this, like, message from MTV being like, we want to talk to you about these videos. And to me, I was like, wow, like, game over. Hello, Hollywood. Like, yeah. <laughs> like put on my, like, blazer and let's go talk about business. I'm my going new to career. the Oscars. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's where you guys entered in. And it was like, you guys were like, we kind of want to do that, too. And I was like, this is great. Yeah. Well, we, yeah, we definitely, like, I mean, yeah, essentially we were, we, we never ended up actually being able to do it. We ended up not being able to do a lot of what we wanted to do. But um, we shot a bunch of those, and they were so fucking funny. I mean, we would just take statuses, just like, I'm trying to make a meatball. I yes. can't make the right meatball. I, what is the key to making a meatball? You know, just like some dad <laughs> freaking out. Like, Sure. And it's like yeah. at the beginning of, of Facebook and social media where no one had any awareness of, like, to be, like, a little bit cheeky. To, to like no one had that thing of like yeah. I know I'm calling you out to get drunk right now like and now again to bring back full circle I've been doing these videos of influencers like doing real things like an influencer who was mad they didn't get a sticker and at the election <laughs> and I did you know the influencer who's upset by that it's taking a long time to figure out a winner and <laughs> Yeah. It's funny because influencers have like taken the place of the unaware person on social media in a different way. So I'm now I'm doing the voice again that I was doing in a the video voice. with. <laughs> so. I think in, in reality I probably have three voices, and yeah. they just I think that I have thirty, but I have three. <laughs> I'm with you. I I, yeah. I have one basic bitch, and it could be done as a dude uh, or a woman. Yeah, but it works. <laughs> it works. You got a good one. So I guess. <laughs> Listen, you, I, I, um, the way we kind of got back together is like I follow you on Twitter, and someone was like, "You gotta have Gareth on." And I see you're touring and doing all this stuff before, you know, kind of shit at the fan. And it's funny because I, I messaged you like, "I'm too drunk to do it right now, but we have uh, to." You, you wrote, I, I couldn't stop laughing at the response, which was, 
like, because someone had said that, and we were like, let's do it. So then we were DMing, and then it was basically like you'd ask me a scheduling question, and I'd answer it, and I was like, I can't, because I'm working on, can we do it? And you were just like, I'm too drunk to answer right now. Uh, write me back tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, well, who, who is your, like, drunk decision, like, to not just be like, I'll reply tomorrow, to be like, well, I'm too drunk, so, I can't handle this, so let's here, touch base tomorrow. Here's my thought process, and this happens to me. I answer every DM. and. Okay. Because I answer every DM, that's also how I organize things. So, like, I go from top to bottom. So, it's like, they'll be like, can I send you $100 to do a cameo over Ven... But I don't want to do cameo. I want to do Venmo. And I'll be like, no. I can't do that because I will forget because your thing will go down the screen and I'm like, and then someone will be like, can I have advice on something? Because we do advice here as we're going to do the emails, jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. But they'll be like, can I have advice from you right now? And I'll be like, I don't have time for this right now, but I need you to get back to me, yeah. you know, to give, if you want this advice, like over DM, this is why I have Patreon. Like you can get advice over Patreon, but like, this is like. It, it becomes like it's all about organization because if I don't do it right then, then that's I will why, forget about it. That's why I love the mark as unread feature in your email. That is, I'm so that, OCD about it that I'm like, I can't – I keep looking at it thinking it's going to be something different. Wait, you'll look at the email? Oh, yeah. See, the, the mark that, is that's unread. A, that's enough for me to be like, I'll remember to do that. But, yeah, no, I mean it was just uh, – I, I love someone – too drunk to schedule, but sober enough to, to put a pin in it. Put a pin in it. Yeah, that is it. <laughs> that's exactly what I was doing. I was like, I don't have the wherewithal. I, I'm drunk. Well, let's revisit this when, I'm not, revi when this guy's not on the ship. Sober me will be happy that I got Gareth Reynolds. Sober me is, will do the full booking. I just reach out. Listen, I'm pumped to have you. you. Tell me about the dollop because I want people to go subscribe to your podcast. What do you do on it? Because I, I, again, I go tour and then I'll see the dollop everywhere, but I don't know it. So what? How, give me the one minute trailer. What are you guys doing? Uh, the dollop? It's basically an American history comedy podcast. So okay. a, a comedian friend of mine who loves history every week prepares an insane story. Um, the, the history of this country is never ending with insanity. I had so, no idea. Let me interrupt you for two seconds. Was yeah. that the guy that did the live? Because I went to your YouTube channel and watched the live election. Yeah, he and I did the election coverage. Yeah. So he was great. It's it, the, the dynamic. He's very much the storyteller in that yes. thing. In yes. That dynamic. He has access to a lot of facts that have missed me. And okay. so we, we started the podcast and we didn't realize that I knew nothing about American history. So sure. that just very quickly led into the ruse that every week he prepares this crazy story and I have no idea what he's going to teach me. And then we just kind of let it unfurl and make jokes and there's just tons of comedy in it because of how bananas this country is. So um, give me, what's your favorite one that you've, like what's your favorite story that you've heard? That Like when you say like this country's bananas, we have so much history that's like, crazy and out of there, like what's there, one that you're what's one that surprised you the most that's honestly there's so many but um one that i've been thinking of just with the presidential potential transfer of power mm. is when andrew jackson was leaving office somebody gave andrew jackson like two thousand pounds of cheese okay and it would have been frowned upon for him to throw it out so he was like throwing cheese parties he was just trying to get rid of it and he couldn't get rid of it <laughs> And he was like, it was like Brewster's Millions, but with cheese. He could not get rid of the cheese. He would give everybody cheese, but it was like 2,000 pounds. And so what he ended up this doing was- This was over the course of his presidency, or is this, this on the years. way out? This was years. And then on the way out, he stashed like 700 pounds of it in the White House. And the next administration came in. And they said you could smell it, like on, the, like on Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue the whole way. Especially the there's no, like, re, like is there refrigeration then? Like, uh, this is how stupid there, I am. Was, I'm showing my no, stupid. I, I don't even know that Indiana, Indianapolis, I, I mean, I'm that stupid. So I ask questions like that all the time. And he'll be yeah. like, yes, of course there were refrigerators, dummy. And I'll be like, well, you never know. <laughs> yeah, but you're among friends. I don't know if they had refrigerators then. If they did or didn't, I don't think they did. 
And so he just like stashed it behind the curtains. And then so whoever came in next, they were like, oh my God. And they took them like months to get the smell of cheese out of the White House. I mean, there's there's tons. There's just, and it's so never ending. So, so there's just all these stories. Like what's the most recent crazy story? Like, yeah, like when I hear Andrew Jackson like hit some cheese in the house, I'm like, that's just how they live back then. They used to bathe in cheese. Like I, I, I have no, like what- The fondue president. Yeah. Uh, um, something uh, recently, I mean, there's there's tons of shit. Um, we did one about a FedEx flight that happened not too long ago that I had never heard of where this guy, uh, basically he was a FedEx employee and he tried to hijack a FedEx flight and was basically fighting with the pilots for like 45 minutes while they tried to make an emergency landing. And then you see the pictures of these dudes come off the plane and they're just bludgeoned. Like they were beaten for like 45 <laughs> minutes while trying to land this fucking plane. This dude wanted to crash it into the FedEx headquarters. Oh my God. Um, yeah. There, I mean, in the 70s, like the 70s, in the seventies, this woman lived with a dolphin and had a sexual relationship with it for like three weeks because for science. A lot of a lot of the episodes are like for science, but then you're like, sure. this is just some real perverted dude. Yeah. Um, but there's tons. I mean, the the more recently it's more like the recent <laughs> ones are more alarming because they're maybe a little more politically motivated. But of course. You go back, I mean, there was there were eras where this country was just drunk. Everybody was everybody was just Damn. drunk. Hammered the whole t- like people would be selling like uh, ladles of gin on the street, and it would not be uncommon to like ladle out of a wheelbarrow and take gin. It was just like drinking all, th- and that led to prohibition, which was its own nightmare. And like the people trying to stop prohibition, I mean, it it really never ends. It's it, the- it could be any time in history, and you just know that it's going to be fucking. Nuts. Well, I love it. I love I love that the podcast game is evolving in this way. Like this is you're finding now there's a pot. You're like, I do an American history comedy podcast. And I'm like, wow, game. Let's do it. Let's hear about the gin drinkers and the cheese and Andrew Jackson. I do like that. You were like, this country has some weird history. And you're like, this one woman was living with a dolphin as if like, that was our American history. Like, (laughs) well, I mean, it, uh, it's just, it this like the woman who lived with the dolphin eventually this guy basically was like we'll put them in a ro- half tank half room for 2 weeks and see what happens like that movie like the the the, the with the fish man which fish <laughs> which fish man? not 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 the one about the jewish guy named fishman uh no. the fish man movie what's the fish man movie where the woman in 2018 I put in the shape of water. Oh, no. I mean, it, it's adjacent. <laughs> adjacent. It might be based on it. Based on when a woman jacked off a dolphin. <laughs> but she eventually jacks the dolphin off. So really? she's writing. Yeah, so she's writing letters to the scientist. She's like, it's really getting flirty. And he's just writing letters. He, what? Flirty? What? Yeah. Yeah, she's like, she's like, it feels like he's like getting sexual. And so the guy's like, go with it. And then it leads to the moment where she... J- and this is the guy who uh, he invented the um, float tank. He did a bunch of ketamine and came up with the idea for a float tank and then so, also came up with the idea for the dolphin experiment. He gave dolphins acid, which is fine. So he was dolphins. just like, he thought dolphins were like a vent, like a way into some other land yeah. of the brain that could help the world is basically he thought, what it is. He thought they were trying to communicate and, and LSD would probably help get the words out. And then when that so, didn't work, he's like, let's just have this lady jerk one off. <laughs> and where does he find the woman craigslist like how do you find hey we're looking I, I, for someone to be a part of a scientific experiment you mammal gotta, on mammal, nothing weird yeah you gotta you gotta love to swim you gotta you gotta be have you ever wish your home was flood are you comfortable with a flooded home what if there was a dolphin in the flood what if the dolphin wanted to bang so are you getting fans of the dollop are they history buffs or are they comedy people like are you getting people at shows that are like i'm a professor of history and this is like kind of you know a relief a a fun way to look at something i'm already interested in are you getting just like drunk dudes being like dolphin fucking you know like what do you we get both (laughs) we certainly we do yeah it's very interesting because i would i represent the dolphin fucking faction of the fan base whereas dave represents the history professors 
but we do get both. I mean, we get hit, we get history people who are like, I had no idea history could be this funny. And then you have comedy <laughs> people who are like, I didn't think comedy could be about history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're, so, and yeah. they're all now working for the magic school bus. They're creating yeah. their own. Like, that's, yeah. they sound like children from a 1990s, like, uh, you know, video about what you should do in school. Yeah. I didn't know math could be fun. <laughs> That's, but, but that's how I was. I mean, it's a very relatable <laughs> position for me. Yeah. Because I'm like, history could be interesting. Because when I think about, like, the history you learned when you were in school, I mean, I had no interest. But if, if they had taught us – and some of these are very relevant stories. Like, the history of Harriet Tubman, her story is so much better than they give it credit for in school. So you're just like, there would have been a way to actually interest me in this shit. But they just never went but, with it. They you know, to defend work. those teachers, it's like – there's a moment where you're like, oh, now I got to fucking sing and dance and do some fart jokes during the Harriet Tubman thing. <laughs> like, like, like they're, well, they're that's trying why to. You need a, that's why you need a. That's why you should have like a me in the classroom to do the fart. <laughs> so she can be like, and then you'll do the fart. I'll be like, is it time for the fart? Thank you. So yeah. Much. yeah. <laughs> well, pay attention. I, I, I listen. I love as a person who's a podcaster and a listener of podcasts. I love when people take the medium and do something different because we've seen the evolution a little bit just in the short time the podcast exists. It starts with Mark Marin sipping a coffee, asking about your life, and then it moves into murder mystery. Then it moves into the J Train podcast, giving dating advice out of my ass, and then it turns into, "Hey, let me teach you about this dolphin and the LSD you know that, that it took once to get us to float tanks." Yep. Like it all kind of comes together i love yeah. that yeah no i that is one of the great things about podcasts without question is that so, a, i mean you can just do it about anything and if it finds an audience it's fucking great and if it's a show if it's an interesting show i mean i you know you talk about philosophy and being like we you know we thought these were so funny we couldn't even put them out though like a oh, podcast yeah. like gives you the opportunity like no oh. we got a canvas I can, you know, like there's murder mystery po like the idea some of these things would never get past the pitch meeting at a TV network. That's why there's success. Like, it, it kind of proves a lot of those people a little bit wrong. I I mean, I, I've worked many, you know, in the system with TV a lot. Mm. And the frustration you get as to how many times you have to keep pitching your concept and tweaking your concept and going through all these series of notes. And then to be able to, it's very, very much like stand-up. Then you yeah. can just go somewhere else and literally do whatever the fuck you want. And well, that is what will respond to that more. Pe you know? People are bad at their job when their job is to keep their job. That is the Very lesson true. of all of this. And if you're if you're in a place where your job is don't take too many risks so I don't lose my job, you're bad at that job. It's why Bill Belichick, I believe, is the greatest coach of all time. Because People in New England could always say, in Bill we trust. So the fan opinion has been eliminated from the Patriots kind of program for the last 20 years. The fan, every fan goes, well, I think this. And then you go, six rings, motherfucker. Shut the fuck yeah. up. And so Bill Belichick wins that early Super Bowl with Tom Brady. Now he's given the leeway of, oh, you're this defensive genius. We trust everything you say. And then he wins for 20 more years. So that's someone who coached to win and be creative yeah. and not and did to what lose. he wanted to do. Yeah. And, and then you look at most coaches in the NFL. I mean, they, what, they have three seasons to get it perfect. And, and you know, they end up going, the well, we'll put in the quarterback that the fans want to hear from yeah. or the owner wants to hear from. Or and I'll it's like, that's, yeah, exactly. It's all pressure moves. That's why, you know, and it's a lesson for life. And that's what this podcast is all about. Let's give some lessons for life. I'm really happy okay. to have you on, Gareth. Thank At you, Reynolds Gareth on Instagram. It's going to be all over my Instagram. Go follow, go support. Hilarious comic. The dollop. It comes out. What day a week does the dollop come out? I think it comes out Tuesday. Tuesdays with the dollop and I want you to go check out Gareth on YouTube because I went and watched his election coverage was so much fun because again the history stuff I didn't even know when I was watching you know he did have a your 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 co-host is a professional he knows his shit he was he, kn he honestly throughout the whole election night 
he was going, it's, it's irrelevant. They're going to count more tomorrow and the next day. And I was like, yeah, but I mean, would you look at the number? You know, I mean, again, I just am like the dummy is like, but look at the shiny graphic, sir. Yeah, like, yeah you and dummy. I are on the, you and I are on the same page. We yeah. are very, how old are you, Gareth? I'm 40. So you're 40. I'm 35. We're around the same era of like, it ends at 10 p.m. because that's when the shows end. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, and he's I like, aligned, no, well, I was very aligned with Trump. I was like, well, it's, we're supposed to know tonight. It was like, no, yeah. the whole thing they told you. I was like, I know what they told me, but it feels like tonight would be lovely. Fallon starts at 1130. OK, <laughs> that's when this ends. Yeah, <laughs> that's I won't but wake I'm up. I'm that way too. Like I'm, yeah. I'm so much like a product of the, you know, the TV generation, the hundred calorie de de generation, the yeah. zero cal diet Coke, you know, like yeah. I'm from that. So I yeah. understand. So yeah. I want everyone to go follow Gareth on YouTube, um, youtube.com slash Gareth Reynolds TV, but it's all on his social media at uh, Reynolds, uh, Reynolds Gareth. Go, go, go. Let's do some emails. You ready? Yes, sir. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Nutrafol. Ladies, I know you don't think it will happen to you, but some of you are losing your hair and you don't even know it. 30 million women experience weakened or thinning hair, but thousands of women have taken back control of their hair with Nutrafol. Improve hair growth and thickness with less shedding through all stages of life. You'll begin to experience thicker, stronger, faster growing hair in three to six months. If this is something that speaks to you, I would tell you to go check out what Nutrafol is doing. If you're sitting there and wondering... A lot of times with these types of things, with thinning hair, with, you know, things with, you know, that you don't even know where to start. And Nutrafol is a good place for you because we got it on the podcast and it's somewhere that you can look at as a resource to investigate. Nutrafol is physician formulated to be 100 percent drug free they use natural clinically effective botanicals it works by targeting the five root causes of thinning stress hormones environment nutrition and metabolism it's easy to get help visit nutrafol.com and take their hair wellness quiz for customized product recommendations when you subscribe you'll receive monthly deliveries so you never miss a dose does it work? Yes. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months. More than 1,500 top doctors recommend it. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com. Use promo code JTRAIN, JTRAIN, JTRAIN. And new customers will get 20, 20, 20% off. This is their best offer available anywhere. Plus shipping on every or It's free shipping on every order. Get 20% off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com. Promo code JTRAIN, promo code JTRAIN. Stand up for your strands, get Nutrafol. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by FitBod. Whether you're new to the gym or know your way around a heavy bag, right now it's harder than ever to find the right workout program and stick to it. It can be overwhelming to try working out without guidance. You want to do it right without pushing yourself too hard. FitBod is a smart fitness app. It takes all the guesswork out of planning your workouts. Get a truly personalized fitness program that adapts as you get stronger. Their algorithm factors in your goals, experience level, equipment, how much time you have and how long it takes to recover in order to craft a perfect total body workout program just for you. FitBod knows you better than you know yourself and even better than what a trainer could do for you. It integrates with other fitness and health apps like Apple Health, Fitbit, and Strava to get real-time information about your workout so it can plan to do uh, what to do next. I I'll say this. I love an app that gives you a tailored workout. FitBod is a great place for that. I like knowing that there's a beginning, middle, and end to my workout. I like to know that I have achieved the goal of going to the gym. I think that's the hardest part about going to the gym. What do I do there? How long do I go for? When do I go? What do I work out? How do I work out? This gives you a beginning, middle, and end, and I love that. That's the best. That, to me, I just ran the Williamsburg Bridge. I love doing that run because I go there, I go there and back, and I'm done. 
done. I've done it. I've had my workout for the day. It is now a badge I can wear until the next day. So FitBod workouts are bl- balanced to avoid w- overworking muscles with varied exercises to keep you sharp and keep your workouts interesting. I've gone through the app. The app is very intuitive. It's very good. It's a great place to create a program for you so you don't just waddle around the gym like I would do. No equipment, no worries. FitBot has body weight routines for those looking to get fit at home or on the go. All you need is the app. FitBot is super easy to use and even has HD video tutorials to make learning new exercises a breeze. Personalized training can be tough on the budget, but FitBot is only $9.99 a month or $59.99 a year. Plus, you can try one month of workouts absolutely free. Get a personalized fitness plan that helps you work out smarter at fitbod.me slash jtrain. That's fitbod.me slash jtrain. One more time, you can try FitBod for free for one month when you sign up at fitbod.me slash jtrain. This one's called Urgent. Jared, huge fan, daily listener here. Long story, so sorry. Writing in because I fucked up big time. I've been with my boyfriend for a year. We live together. Everything is amazing, etc. Over Halloween weekend, we had a party and all was going well. Everything went black at one point, and next thing I know, we're in bed fighting the next day. He was telling me all these crazy things I said and did. Apparently, I touched another guy's leg and was hinting to my boyfriend how he has no idea what I've done, quote unquote. Among other things, now he's convinced I cheated on him in the past. Let's be clear. I definitely have not ever. I have no clue why I said these crazy things to him. I've been apologizing profusely and trying to reassure him of my loyalty. He doesn't know what to think, but is willing to try couples therapy to work through it. I'm worried I threw my whole life away in one night that I don't even remember. My question to you is, would you stick around after something like this? Would you ever be willing to trust someone after they said slash did those things? God, I feel horrible and just need some real talk best. So what do you think, Gareth? Are you are you dating anyone? Are you are you living with anyone? What's going on with you personally? No, no. But it's not because I touched someone's leg at a Halloween party or anything. No. <laughs> I, uh, no, I um I am single, but I well the first thing is that al like alcohol dread is so much worse like than regular you know what I mean? Like, than a regular fuck up. Like, a non remembering alcohol fuck up is t- weighs twice as much just right off the bat. Yeah. So the guilt you feel is, is just very heavy. Whether it's right or wrong, it's still skewed by alcohol brain. It's, yeah. Nothing's as bad as you think. Nothing's yeah. as good as you think. Nothing was as good as you didn't dance as good as you thought you did on the alcohol. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you didn't kick someone's you don't ruin someone's life by your dancing when you're hung over you didn't throw your life away and you didn't make your life yeah alcohol yeah Yeah. it enhances reality um but uh i remember once when i was in high school i got so fucking drunk like a week before i went to college like so drunk yeah that i didn't remember shit and my mother the next day was like i was saying i didn't want to go to college i was saying all these things that were not real and i was like i don't know Mm. what i was talking about i don't know what i meant um, it is just these weird, deep thoughts that come. You just say weird shit. I mean, you're fucking drunk. You're a bottle of alcohol <clears> all <throat> around. Yeah. So if my advice would be to stick with it. And if you really, if you did not do these things, then you have a case. It's one thing if you did do these things and sure. you kind of let it go. I would hang in there and keep fighting the good fight. And if he wants to go to therapy over it, I would say do a couple sessions of that, and I bet you a therapist is going to have your back in some way and make that a little easier and less tense. Would you do? Would you stay with her in this scenario? You're I, living with her. I would. We went over a year. We lived together. Everything's amazing. I would. I would. Yeah. But probably because I'm aware that that alcohol makes you say crazy, crazy shit. I'm I'm with you. I don't like. Would I stay with her? Like if my girlfriend did the same thing, I could find. I definitely would be able to find forgiveness in my heart. Yeah. It would take a minute. It would take a minute. I would have to talk it out. I would have to trust them again. It would take time and work. The things she said, though, I do understand how she got to what she did. Like, there's, she said, I was touching another guy's legs, and I was hinting to my boyfriend how he has no idea what I've done. I mean, if I was to frame this, yeah, I would go... You either cheated 
and she we're going to take the emailer at her word, which she didn't, or you were trying to get his attention. And yeah. I could understand that my girlfriend would say that my girlfriend would do these things. Once I believe that she didn't cheat, I could totally understand that she's doing these things as a way to get me to react to her because she knows that other men and vagueness of a you don't even know would yeah. get me to you know engage LA. with yeah. her and and so i understand like where the drunk i'm trying to get inside the drunk brain which well, didn't cheat like you know like taking her at her word i so as her boyfriend i could understand i'd be like listen you might not be good with alcohol. That's a whole different story that maybe we can work on together. And couples therapy can get us to talk about things. Why did you need me to have your attention? Why did you need to get a rise out of me? Is there something missing as far as – like my questions would be, are you missing excitement here? That's very, very true and very insightful. I think that – because – if you're tr you're trying to trace back the brain of a mentally deficient person and figure out why they said something, like there might not be a strong basis of reality, <laughs> but in the brain of someone inebriated, they're like, "This will work," but you don't have access to the blueprints that this person was working off. Of. Uh, absolutely, and yeah. and we do, but we do have access to the drunk person who's coming to us, going, "I've never like we." In, in most cases, you get it from the other side being like, my girlfriend was drunk. She's touching other person's like She says she's never cheated. We're getting the person. She has no reason to lie to us. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So, so yes, it probably, I think you're right. It's probably birthed out of some skewed tactic that was in the mind at the time. And and it would be important, I think, to address. The, the questions you just asked, I think, are very relevant. If you were to well, say. I, yeah, go ahead. Are you, are you not, it seems like you were trying to make me jealous. What would be the root of that? Do you think that's tethered to something in reality? And why? That, that's what I would want to talk about as the boyfriend. Yeah. The, the cheating, I have to believe you. And listen, he may not believe you and never trust you again. And at that point, the relationship is done. I, there's not much I can... I can't tell someone how to feel. If he... It, it, also, there's the other thing and there's the other... You know, not likely, but another scenario that could happen is... He goes with it as a he sees this as a way out where he doesn't have to be in a relationship anymore. And maybe he was second guessing, uh, guessing the relationship. And that sucks because then it, then you probably beat yourself up over it. I don't, I don't well, you, you, you go, if, if I hadn't done this, it would have ended anyways if he just lets this be as out. As, if as you offer point. up therapy, I think that is if the person who's been wronged offers up therapy, that's a way to say that this person is still it, invested in this. I, that's why this to I work agree. Out. Yeah. yeah. So I would uh, there's good signs. I mean, look, Halloween is less than a week ago. I mean, you're still like right around the nuclear blast. So you need to give it a minute to let the dust settle. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, cooler heads will probably prevail. But I would, mm -hmm. I would do the therapy thing for one to session to see if that kind of unearths any of these things that you were alluding to, which I think. And, and, and maybe it's an uncomfortable conversation about where I need excitement from yeah. because this is, again, this is the, the hardest thing is to wrong someone else and go, Hey, I wronged you because I need this. That yeah. fucking sucks. And I, I don't envy that conversation, but you have to have it at some point. Or maybe, I mean, it also could potentially speak to not having, like she might not be having as much fun as she thinks she is. I mean, but because if you're throwing back that many, then maybe you're like, and it could be pandemic based too, that we're all kind of like locked in more than we were. Um, but yeah, I, I, there's, I would stick with it. I think it sounds workable. It's totally. just so hard after the crash of a blackout hey. to make sense of any of it. I mean, that's why the older you get, the more you're like, I got to limit these blackouts. I, like, I, I, I don't, it's not worth it. It's not, it's not worth the, the, old, the anxiety. Guilt. The guilt you feel the older you get at blackouts, it's just, you be, oh, it's, dude, my last one was probably 37, yeah. and I was like, this is fucking crazy. Like, this has to be it. I can't dude, do it. I got drunk, but not even that drunk, but then I ate pizza afterwards, and I was guilty about the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah it's, like, it's really true. It's always going to be guilt. It's just going to be different versions. Yeah, the pizza becomes the thing where you're like, I'm a bad person. I don't I'm care bad, about myself. I couldn't even not eat the pizza. I'm a bad human. <laughs> J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Here with Gareth Reynolds at Reynolds Gareth. Go youtube.com slash Gareth Reynolds TV. 
Let's do another one. Dating for seven years, but no ring. Hello, I've been dating my boyfriend for seven years. We own a house together, have had the same bank account for five years. We are basically married in every way except for the actual paper. I never thought I would be in a relationship this long or this involved without being married, and it's really starting to leave me a bit resentful. I've made it very clear since we started dating that marriage was always my goal. He always agreed but still hasn't proposed. He keeps saying he's going to and even he, he said – and even said he planned to have a ring on my finger by the end of the year. That was four years ago. What should I do at this point? I get the impression that he just doesn't care regardless of how much I say it matters. But keep saying he cares. Am I wasting my time? I love him and he's my best friend, but I don't understand why he doesn't want this to want this too, especially after all this time. Thanks so much for taking this uh, for reading this. I hope to hear from you. So what do you think, Gareth? It's weird. It would it would be troubling if there weren't all these other bank account and home attached because those are decisions. I mean, that's you know, I think a guy worries about, uh, you know, that those are levels of financial security. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. That is stuff that you're inviting someone into that part of your life. It feels like marriage would be a A no brainer. A no brainer. I. So it yeah. seems weird. It also is very weird to say I'll propose by the end of the year or not. I mean, my advice would be— How about be, doing that four years ago? I mean, it's crazy. That I mean, but I, I would—I mean, you have to have a real conversation where you say— Well, he, he doesn't believe that she'll ever leave. He doesn't— well, then, I th- then, I, then, I mean, look— there are certain times where you got to be a little bit like a poker player who doesn't have a hand and just bluff a little bit. And well, yeah, there might be something to the idea of just without consequence, but tossing out the idea that a non-married life like this, like a domestic partnership is not what you're after. And at some but, point that. Needs and to if be. he, and if he's after that, that's fine. Let's start yeah. at if he's after a relationship with no marriage, he's allowed to want that. Totally. But you're also allowed to want marriage. So the the biggest problem I have with her email, because that was four years ago. <laughs> you know, like yeah, four have years you ago. Have addressed yeah. it since? Yeah. So like, what? It, it, do, and also, are you not bringing it up and then having it explode in a fight where he just thinks this is an explosion that he never has to take seriously? Because I, when you say it happened four years ago, I go, okay, so at what point did you have – you have a standard that you're saying, but you're not really acting on. I think that's true as well. I think if, if it's been four years, you – there needs that, to be a Four years up. since the time he said, yeah, I'll I marry mean, you by the end of the year. Like there needs to be a follow-up. It needs. It's time for him to get called into the boss's office and be yeah. like, okay, we had a deadline. We've completely missed the deadline. <laughs> Why did we miss this deadline? Yeah, so what's and when are we going to get the project? And I think <laughs> that that will be that if you've not had a conversation like that since then, that will be uh, an eye-opening conversation. It sometimes is very hard to start those conversations because it, you worry, you you live in fear. But it is better I also, to get it off. Than I to also keep have. It. I agree with you completely. It has to happen whether it's happened or not. I also understand. I empathize with her being like, I don't want to make a guy marry me. You know, yeah. like th- th- that's totally. And like, I've seen those dudes. I've been at those weddings where you're watching a dude who's like, ah, yeah, she, this is what I had to do to like keep my life together. Yeah. And it's like, like there's a point where it's like, are you staying together now because of the house? Like she brought up a lot of facts that like the, another thing she said in her email, I love him and he's my best friend. Mm-hmm. Well, this is something women tend to say as some sort of catch all. Everything's fine. Like my best friend wouldn't teach me treat me this way. Yes. Or and if he and if your best friend did, you would feel comfortable saying to your best friend, hey, what the what fuck? the fuck? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so we have. So I, I think sometimes when people get into that, he's my best friend mode. They they all, they like kind of glaze over. 
well, he's my best friend, so I would never. No, no, no. He, the friendship is eroding. He yeah. might have been your best friend at some point, but right now your best friend has been taking advantage of you and the things you want for four years. Well, I also You're, always think that, like, I've had girls who have told me that I'm their best friend. Yeah. And have asked me if I'm, and I'm like, well, I love you and, like, we're together. <laughs> But no, you're not my best. <laughs> like my no. best friend is something totally different to me. Yeah, like my best more, friend yeah. is a person who I'll smoke cigarettes with and go to a bar with and we'll watch <laughs> sports and we'll talk about you because he's my yeah. best friend. Well, uh, I, I think the way women feel like women kind of act with their best friends the same way they do with a boyfriend. Yeah, that's very they'll be like, oh, you know, like <laughs> like women, <laughs> women will take a trip to their friend who lives in another state and then spend the weekend cuddling in PJs. Like yeah. I w- that's how I would be with my girlfriend. I would yeah. never be that way. Or with be my like, buddy. my best friend is such a fucking bitch. And you're like, I've never said that about my best. friend. No, no. I'm like that's my best friend. Yeah, he, my best friend he is not acts a the way bitch. he acts the way he does. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> he does what he does. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, I mean, I that's I think we're saying the same thing, which is that it. Uh, I would I would open yourself up to just saying some of the things you think and not worry about the fallout and see what comes of it. I mean, yeah. you've gone through these steps. If it is a must for you, I always feel bad in a relationship wasting someone's time. Like if I'm like this is not right, I call it out far too early. Like people will be like, why call the audible now? And I'm like, well, I don't like the D. I don't like the way it's lined up. Well, that's so, a that. That is also a very male thing, too. If you think about yeah. it, guys don't want to waste your time. But guys never say, I don't want to waste my time. Guys love wasting their own time. We love, yeah. oh, I'll waste my day all day long, but I don't want to waste your time. And I think this guy is right now wasting your time and on, like on the road for life moving on. And you have to let him know, hey. I want to be married and I want to be married to you. I see our life together. If you don't see our life together and in and married, that's fine. But you got to let me go find that with someone else. And this isn't a soulmate situation. There's a couple different soulmates out there that I can find and be happy with. But this life right now, I feel like I'm a prisoner. I would feel if I was her, I would feel in a prison. I also feel like dudes, I've been in relationships where it, the breaking up hasn't seemed as hard as the logistical pulling apart of the things you have together. Like, I remember like, I remember like separating DVDs and CDs with a girl and being like, this is hell on earth. Like this, (laughs) it doesn't get any worse than being like, sure. You want to keep the, uh, being John Malkovich DVD or is that, can I, you know, like, so I think to dudes, it, it could, that could be what it is. I mean, he could feel like he's in a logistical corner and, yeah. you know, doesn't really know what to say. But the best way, again, to, to find that out is to just kind of like suck it up for a minute and say one of the things that you're probably worried hearing the answer to from him and just see what you get out of it. Yeah. And, and I think that's like the, the, the biggest thing is that this could you have to be willing to end this. You, yeah. and, 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 and if that's not even a thought in your mind, then that's why you're still here in the same situation you were in four years ago. You have to get real with the idea of this being of you moving out and of you you know separating the DVDs and of you you know separating the the house and stuff and it's like she said it in the beginning of her email for a reason to show us how look at we have everything else and it's like you're missing something yeah. something is missing and you got to talk about it. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Rothy's. This season, gift the give of comfortable, washable, sustainable shoes and bags from Rothy's. Rothy's shoes are incredibly comfortable with zero break-in period thanks to their seamlessly knit-to-shape design. It's no surprise that Rothy's best-selling shoe, the Point in Black, has over 3,000 near-perfect reviews. Spread some holiday cheer with the newest Rothy styles like winter-ready shoes, brand-new bags, and washable masks. And with a Rothy's gift card, you can let your loved ones pick the perfect present. I love Rothy's. I love what they're doing. I love that the 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 person they're looking to be on. They 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 have a great market, I would say, because it's not that go out shoe, but it's not the stay at home shoe. It's that I got to run to the market. I got to run out. I got to be out. I got to have a little, you know, I don't want to look I want to look put together, but I'm not looking to get dressed up. That is a great spot for this show and especially for 2020 when where are you even going and and i'll tell you this i got them for my mom 
She loves them. No break in period. Says it's the most comfortable shoes she's ever worn. Rothy's come in an ever-changing array of colors, prints, and patterns. Rothy's are available in a range of styles. Rothy's shoes are seamlessly knit with thread made from plastic water bottles, so they're ultra-comfortable as soon as you slip them on. That's right. There's zero break in period. And you're also doing well for the earth. That's a Listen, it's a win-win-win. Find out why Glamour called Rothy's one of the top gift ideas you can't go wrong with and why Allure says Rothy's is the eco-conscious gift you'll see on every list. Rothy's signature thread is actually spun from plastic water bottles that they turn into shoes, bags, and even face masks. And another bonus, Rothy's are fully machine washable. That's huge. Because that, that makes it last. When you know you can pop them in the wash and just have them come out looking fresh and clean, there you go. Check out the amazing shoes and bags right now at rothys.com slash JTrain. Go to rothys.com, rothys, R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash JTrain. rothys.com slash JTrain. Style and sustainability, these are the shoes you've been waiting for. Head to rothys.com slash JTrain today and slip into something you'll feel good about. JTrain podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com here with Gareth Reynolds at Reynolds Gareth on Instagram. Go follow, get involved. The dollop every Tuesday. Let's do. I, I forwarded you an email with an attachment. Me? Yes. Do you see it? Yes. Why? <laughs> the subject is great. Okay, so okay. I'll read the subject, and then we're going to do a little theater. Okay. okay. Oh, very. We like to. We like to. Yeah, very philosophy inspired by the the TV show philosophy. We're going to do this. Um, I'm still waiting to hear on season two. By the way, we'll uh, hopefully we'll get there. Fingers are still crossed. crossed. I, very crossed. What if my fingers like literally had like mud in them? I'm like I'm still crossing, and then, like I I was like, Jesus, and you're like, it's, it's not coming. Oh, yeah. oh my God, Jared. <laughs> I'm in the Guinness book. <laughs> so why is this dude I'm talking to calling me dude? Okay. Okay. Hi, Papa. I'll get right to it. I matched with a guy on Hinge and I've been talking for about a month. We've gone on two FaceTime dates and he's got a ton of potential. And I hope we can meet soon once quarantine restrictions start opening up. This was sent in uh, earlier in the summer, by the way. Okay. Today, we've been texting, and he's called me dude a total of three times during conversation. This bothers me, but I'm not entirely sure on how to approach this. What are your thoughts? Would a guy, why would a guy call a girl dude? Is this a way to let her know he's not into it? Any thoughts would be appreciated. Below are some screenshots of the conversation between us as well as a pic of me in my feather sweatshirt. You can get your feather. I'm not going to show the pic of her, but you can get your feather shirt. Let me take a chance to plug. Um um shop.jaredfreed.com you can get your feather feather shirt so okay i'll be him okay i'll be her you be him okay i start then right yes okay yeah it's looking like it's gonna be a great weekend yeah of course any advice helps muscle arm emoji how's your social media presence for your company do you have an instagram and a facebook page for it because if not you should a a, a thousand percent i'm she used more than that, but I don't know even what that is. Yeah. Make one <laughs> and hashtag a bunch of Long Island hashtags. Post pics from the job sites, and that'll for sure bring in business. Plus, it'll also make you more trustworthy because if I look up the company and I'm able to see a social media site, it's more personable. I love the advice, dude. I do have an IG, but very slow with it. I like I don't do much posting or hashtagging, and I always say that I'm going to start, but I don't. Mm ambivalent smiley <laughs> uh okay and then it goes on there's another let, text i will let you know dude ha 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 yelling at her are you going to be doing the makeup at the bridal shower watch it I'm when you wa to send a video <laughs> you sent a video i'm gonna watch the videos after dinner okay <laughs> so the why video, do you think the, the video by the way is getting high with a hallucinogenic toad <laughs> So this guy is something else. So, I mean, that could explain the dude might, thing. Might have insight into the dude. Yeah. Like, I don't think, again, nothing means nothing, but nothing, but a lot of things don't mean everything. Yeah. You know, like, guys. Said, <laughs> the Toad video really changed my opinion <laughs> on the whole thing. I'm not going to lie. Because before, yeah, that, like, it's bullshit. I think that is weird. 
I, I was watching this fucking, I can't remember what it was called, but some show where the guy kept calling his wife, bro, or bruh. <laughs> and she was like, stop calling me bruh. He's like, what? Yeah. And, like, and, and, and the guy was not into her. I could tell that. And so it makes it does make me think that that's fucking weird. It's just a fucking weird thing to call someone you're interested in. But the high with a toad video, it just carves out a different kind of archetype. It, it, it tells us a little bit about who the person is and kind of the things that they think are funny or interesting. And dude kind of plays into that yeah. for a woman. Yeah. I would agree. I think also this text conversation – the whole business partners text. This is something to steer away from. Like, I know a lot of people want to show like, look how interested I am or look how, but like the minute you get into like best practices for your business is the minute it's like, you guys have gone too far down the river of this textual relationship. Like to me, like it's fine to go. You should definitely do more with Instagram, but also you're not dating this guy enough to give him like a whole business plan. Like also whatever this guy does, it sounds like he should know all the things that she just said. Exactly. So it's like, what are you doing? Are you trying to show him? That, like, so I, I think a lot of people do this when they're in the beginning of relationships. They're trying to show someone, look at how good of a mother I'd be. Look how good of a father I'd be. Look how good of a business person I am. Look at how much I know from my college education. Like, And I get, like, that stuff will reveal itself. I think, like... In the beginning, and I think that's why it brings you towards dude land, where you're literally, the guy's like, dude, totally, like, yeah, like, as if you're the foreman on it, as if you're a social media expert at the at the work site. <laughs> like, it just puts this in a land of, like, non-fun, non-flirty, non-get-me-to-the-date place. Yeah, that it's no, by no means a term of endearment. It, it It's actually, like, it pulls back that feeling like you would feel yeah. more, you would feel much better if he just didn't refer to you as anything versus dude. Absolutely. It's weird. It's certainly weird. Well, I, I think what it also does is it puts a casual spin on everything. It yeah. keeps everything. It's not like babe, which is like even babe is bad, but also like when it's too soon. Yeah. And it, I think this puts it in a like, Hey, we're cool. Like, you give me business stuff, maybe we'll go out, maybe we'll do this. It, it lands this all in a whatever, man. We're just kind of two single people who talk sometimes. And it's like, yeah. no, you're not that chill. That's okay to admit. It's okay to be like, I want fucking dates. I don't want to be the dude bro to your fucking hallucinogenic toad. Like, yeah, I'm looking for I'm more. I'm not looking to watch <laughs> toad smoking videos. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think uh, that's what I would say. I would. It's a flag. I would. I would feel like it's a way. It's a subtle way of keeping things casual constantly, and that's absolutely probably not what you're into. And and there's a point. I think if you hear the dude, it's not a point to go like, "Hey, you call me dude. You want casual?" I think it's like time to like release yourself from the text conversation. So it's like. Yeah. Hey, great talking with you. Let me know when you want to do that date. Dude. Like you have to be able to get in front. You have to re get in front of him to have the 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 fun and the flirty. It, 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 it's not gone, but you need to reset. Yeah, recalibrate. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Gareth Reynolds, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me, Jared. A pleasure. Th this was fantastic. Everyone go check out the dollop at Reneth. Ren at, I always get this one. at okay. Reynolds Gareth. It's hard to say after I say your name not, first, no, the first way. <laughs> so go check out the dollop um, and go check out his YouTube page, uh, Gareth Reynolds TV on YouTube. I'm Jared Freed. We're here Mondays and Thursdays. We'll be back next episode. Boom. Don't forget to like the video you just watched. I have many more. Subscribe to the channel right now. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe, like and subscribe, you fool. There's even a bell you can click to. Now you've got your week set Monday through Friday. I'm here for you.